Welcome to Electra Online. Were the Viking landers destined to find signs of life on the surface of Mars? Well, the odds were really against them. And let's take a look at why that is so. There are slim chances of finding life on Mars because, first of all, there is no ozone layer. So no ozone layer means you're not protected against UV radiation. The Earth has a nice ozone layer in the stratosphere which protects us against that UV radiation. Mars does not have that. It is extremely arid, very, very dry on the surface, and therefore no surface water can be found in any sort of quantity over vast stretches of the planet. It's extremely cold. Temperatures typically range anywhere from 20 below to as much as 60, 70, 80 below Celsius. So again, if it's that cold for life to exist and for liquid water to exist, it's virtually impossible. There's also no magnetic field to speak of. There is surface magnetism because of the, the uh, surface soil. There's some magnetism there, but from the core, there's no protective shield around the planet that a planet like Earth has or Jupiter has. Mars does not have that, so there's no protection against the solar wind. The solar wind are these particles coming in at very high velocity, slamming into the surface of the planet, and you're not protected against that. There's very low atmospheric pressure, and because of that, there's no chance of liquid water existing on Mars for any length of time. The moment you pour water on the surface, it begins to boil away. And finally, the fact that there's little atmosphere and no magnetic field, there's no protection against cosmic radiation, and that's deadly. And cosmic radiation has very high energy, comes through the, the very thin atmospheres, not deflected by the magnetic field, and penetrates the soil and rocks to quite a depth. So any life near the surface would definitely have a tremendous obstacle in overcoming the onslaught of cosmic radiation. Here on Earth, we're protected to a large extent by that cosmic radiation. Only a little bit of it gets through, not the case on Mars. So this does seem to indicate that the chance of finding life was pretty slim. But nevertheless, we wanted to know if life was on the planet. So there were biological experiments on the landers totaling equipment, 15 and a half kilograms, about 34 pounds of equipment, which was about 30% of the payload. So about one third of the payload was used for these biological experiments. The three, the three experiments were pyrolytic release experiment, the label release experiment, and the gas exchange experiment. Looks like I'm missing a T right there. All right. Now, the first one was what we call carbon assimilation. Is there some means by which the soil has things in them that assimilate carbon? And it turns out that the test had a slightly positive result beyond experimental error. So there seems to be some assimilation of carbon, which looked very promising. The second one was labeled release experiment, respiration. Was there some sort of indication that there was some respiration um, in the, well, potential organic material that was in the soil? And there was actually a fairly strong positive result on this test which seemed to indicate that there was something going on in the soil with the right ingredients provided for that test. It seemed like some respiration was active. And finally, there was a gas exchange experiment, which is essentially the photosynthesis uh, experiment, where it, there would be an uptake of potentially carbon dioxide and an emission of oxygen. And so they wanted to see if any of these three things were happening. So they have the characters PR for paralytic release, the LR for label release, and the GAX for the gas exchange experiment. Now that one ended up coming up negative, no results for that. But of course, for the positive results to carry any sort of weight, there was one more experiment that had to be positive, or any positive results here would be negated. What was the result here? Well, they had a one, they had one gas chromo chromatograph, ooh, that's hard to pronounce, chromatograph, mass spectrometer. Well, a mass spectrometer measures the mass of the things that it's looking at, and the gas chromat chromat chromatograph, wow, I can barely pronounce that, is able to distinguish between the different kinds of elements or chemicals that might be in the soil. And it was looking for the composition and the abundance of any sort of organic material in the soil. 
So in other words, if there's no organic material in the soil, then these tests being positive doesn't mean anything because then there must be some other chemical explanation for the reaction. But if there is organic material, then the organic material could be the potential source of the results, the positive results of those experiments. So it was extremely promising and the, the, the results of these tests were very, very positive, especially the middle one here, the labor release experiment, really seemed to indicate that something organic was happening. Uh, but then, of course, with the negative result of this test, that should really be negated. And there's still a, a lot of individuals that said, well, this was so positive that it almost had to show that life existed on Mars. But I think in general, most scientists would agree that none of the tests gave us a positive indication because both of these had to be correct or had to be a positive for that to be considered. Now, let's take a look at it. Well, first of all, UV light sterilizes everything on the surface. So it essentially cleans the surface clean. Not only the UV light, but also the uh, cosmic radiation, which essentially would destroy any life that would be anywhere near the surface. And the UV light not only sterilizes, but also causes reactions that produce very highly reactive chemicals. And it turns out that later the Phoenix lander, which landed near the, the pole region, kind of high up, the uh, Phoenix lander landed about right here, they're pretty high up, but again, it was in the lowland region of Mars, and it has discovered perchlorate in the Martian soil, and any perchlorate in the Martian soil would make it virtually impossible for life to exist. I believe they also found um, H2O2, again, that's a very reactive chemical, and those, among others, would really make it difficult for any sort of life to exist. So again, because of the initial conditions, you would look at that and go, Chance of finding life are pretty slim, and if you're going to make a bet, you would probably want to bet against life existing instead of for life existing if you're going to win your bet. So um, it was very exciting. The results got everybody going, but then in the end, when all the, the data came in and clear minds were looking at all the information put together, we just have to conclude that we don't believe there's any life on Mars.